My Gavan and Melonine and well met indeed. I'm Arachir Galadirathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. And welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as the RR Denyim. And welcome to the town of Basra Doom. I have again spared you the loading screen and the army arrangement. For here we are in the mountains of southern Eridluin, where we plan, if everything goes according to plan, to crush the Dwarven Resistance here. Now, the Dwarven Resistance, I'm afraid, is only three units. Some Orc Hunters, who I believe are the General, the Captain. Uh, yes, they are. Some Eridluin Warriors, and far over the field, a Dwarven Labourer's Battalion. Stands guard over Basra Dum, which you will note has Ardenayim architecture. We are reclaiming lands that were stolen from us. And uh, it's going to be good. Um, although at the minute what it is doing is like lagging out really heavily. I don't know what's happening there, but it is not enjoying playing this game. We're anyway, it's only one and it will... Oh, it's already sorted itself out. And on to victory. Right, stop our archers firing because that's just useless. Casbolt's help with the gate as the uh, wall has gone down. Um, this will be one of a few battles in today's episode because we, those who can attack immediately against the Dwarven Garrisons will do, which I believe is three armies. Three of our something like seven armies are, um, have siege equipment and can attack immediately. Um, so that is what we will be doing. Taking down the dwarves slowly. Now, do note that the Arada Nyam campaign will come to an end with the final defeat of Ered Lewin. That is our end point. We cannot win this campaign because the Orcs of the Misty Mountains have already won it. Um, and so, even if I achieve my victory conditions, that we won't get a pop up notification or anything like that. Um, so, our own prescribed victory conditions are to defeat Ered Lewin, and then we shall end it. I don't want to take Isengard down because I really don't want to have to slog against Mordor for no reason. And um, we could press on and remove the Misty Mountains, but I, I feel like the campaign, given that Ered Luin did so much to ruin and destroy us in the earlier days, I feel like defeating them is a nice end point for our campaign, if you will. So I'm happy to call that the final point. Once the R.R. Denaim campaign comes to an end, the, the Angmar campaign will the take its and place. Uh, and there might be a little, a brief window where there's no replacement because um, the R.R. Denaim campaign will likely wait for a few extra bits and pieces to be finished in terms of modding before we go ahead with it. Uh, the uh, Angmar campaign, I think I said that. I may have said R.R. Denaim. But anyway, so there might be a bit of a downtime in between the two, but it shouldn't be really. Um, so there we are, that's the future of this campaign and then of course Angmar. And speaking of Angmar and therefore version 3, much has made change in the past few days. Um, specifically related to the installer for whatever version we do. I have drastically altered the installer so that, number one, it will create a shortcut on your desktop to then run Divide and Conquer. So, because we get quite a few people often say, I've installed Divide and Conquer, but I have no idea how to actually run it. And fair, that is a fair and legitimate um, complaint to lodge. I can't keep banging on about making sure people have played Third Age Total War before you install a submod, because that's just not feasible anymore. DAC is arguably now larger and more often downloaded than Third Age Total War. So we cannot presume people have that because many people get Third Age purely to then play DAC, so this may be their first experience. So we have to make it as beginner friendly as we can. Second, because Large Address Aware is an absolute necessity to play Divide and Conquer on a any computer that has Time 64, that is Time 64 or 64 bit, um, the Large Address Aware patch the executable now runs whilst you are installing Divide and Conquer. Our soldiers have proved their worth today. So it will install Divide and Conquer, now. and then just before you finish, it will run the Large Address Aware patch. Now, do note that my skills with scripting are not such that it actually applies the patch. It merely runs it. You are then required to the navigate to the file that favor. needs to be altered, select it, and then save. It's very straightforward, and also when the Large Address Aware patch pops up, so will a notepad document explaining what you need to do. So got you covered. 
The final change to the installer is that there will be only one. We are going to do what stainless steel do and what Reforged have done, whereby instead of having two or three executables that you have to run one after the other, there will be a single executable, um, but there will be in total four files. But three of those files are .bin files and will mean nothing to most of you. Um, but the installer is a smaller file and it takes the files from them. Now this will all be in a zip folder to download so if you um, are unfamiliar with zip folders and you want to play the next version of Divide and Conquer I suggest you look into getting 7-zip or WinRAR or whatever other free unzipping software um, because you'll need it but almost everyone has some sort of free unzipping software so we're not too concerned about it. let's ship up the reserves now and also run them away because that was really stupid but then this army this is what I was thinking as I was lining the army up I was thinking, it doesn't matter about casualties, really. They have lost half their because death. this army is one of the furthest from the front lines of our entire nation. Um, and so once this army has won here, it won't have too much more to do. But we have still got to get to the square, so we're going to send some flanks around the sides. Hopefully around the sides, anyway. Yes, perfect. Right, and the rest of you go and start tying up the Orc Hunters. Um, and all will be well. Alright, we've got them tied. Just keep pressing into those and our flanking forces will come round. So I'm pleased with the changes to the installer. It will make Divide and Conquer very, very user-friendly. Now the final thing, which we, we are like really, this, we really hoping it. to obtain properly, unlike Reforged, I am throwing shade there because they know what they did was Our wrong. Men are in command but the um, Third Age Total War, um, a, the creator, the leader of the team that created Third Age Total War is called King Kong. And um, five years ago, he wrote a post on Total War like Center, which is Third Age Total War's spiritual home. That is where the sub-mod is based. Mod DB is just to download the files. Same with Divide and Conquer. And he wrote a post in 2014, so four years ago, um, or five years ago now, it was February 2014, yeah, almost five years ago, basically saying that anybody can edit Third Age Total War and create a sub-mod. They just have to give permission, uh, give credit, sorry. And the only other stipulation is that you cannot release a sub-mod as a standalone mod i.e. the user must first download and install Third Age Total War before they have to download and install your submod. Now that is entirely understandable. It then means that Third Age Total War is still shown recognition even in this late stage by people downloading it. Um, and it means that people know that Divide and Conquer, for example, isn't its own thing and a lot of what we have here is from another mod. And I appreciate all of that. However, I have gone to the moderators of Third Age Total War Center and King Kong, although he is long he hasn't logged in to No, sorry, his post was from 2013, and he hasn't logged in to Total War Center since 2014. And I've gone to them all and I've requested that Dak be given an exception to that second rule. Because Third Age Total War is set up um, in such a way that in order to play it, the user has to change something about their Medieval 2 installation. So, Medieval 2 Total War, when you used to have a disc, which is what Third Age Total War is set up for, when you installed the Kingdoms expansion, it put an executable into your folder structure called Kingdoms.exe. Third Age Total War's shortcut and running requirements point to that file. However, when Medieval 2 was ported to Steam and has since been updated to Definitive Edition, although it was long before, they did away with the Kingdoms.exe and they replaced it with just a Medieval 2.exe. Now, it is very, very simple to change Third Age Total Wars in shortcut and um, the file that runs it to point to the Medieval 2.x file. But it's very, very easy if you know what you're doing. And it's not very easy for all of you kind of lay persons, if you will, who don't have never really looked into the files. You've never delved into the files to see what needs to be done. And Divide and Conquer can very easily change that so that everyone installs the game easier if we are allowed to include Third Age Total War in our download. It will come... There would be about... 
there would be at least four or five user reports that we frequently get that would be solved merely by having Third Age Total War in our own download. Those of you who also play Reforged will know that this is also what Reforged do. They have Third Age Total War in their download. Now the reason I threw some shade on them is because they did not even consider that what they were doing was wrong. They never bothered seeking any kind of permission and they just did it. Now granted it obviously is easier for the user and that is why we're pushing for it now as well. And I feel like... If King Kong were still here, given the amount of time that has passed, he may well agree. But we cannot... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I knew I was going to cough once. I've got a bad throat today. Oh, yes, not over the next few weeks. But we cannot assume to know what King Kong would have done because he is not here. Um, this is our next battle, uh, Royal Tharbat. So, we do need to ask permission ideally. Now, we can just go ahead and do it. Don't get me wrong. Um... It's obviously, morally, it's not correct, and it goes against a, an, an obvious gentleman's agreement, and we would likely be banned from Total War Center, but that would not mean our mod would be taken down, because a creator of the original mod would have to try and file a lawsuit, and you, as you say in America, as we say in England, you'd have to try and sue divide and conquer and I think they would really struggle with that now obviously as I always bang on about I I am um, I'm a lawyer so law is my thing but um, I've never dealt with intellectual property law I'm a I'm a I'm a will writer and the two areas of law could not be more different so um, I'm not well versed on the requirements of that but the little knowledge I have of intellectual property law suggests to me that it would be very difficult for a mod to state that another mod has stolen their works. Particularly because neither of us get any form of money for our work and I think that is a big part of the intellectual property law requirements. However, it would also be difficult first of all just to assert jurisdiction because I am British um, and the modding team of Divide and Conquer now, um, well at this very moment, has two people from Britain, one person from America, and one person who I do not know where RK is from, but I think it's Europe. Um, and anyway, the actual modding team that created Divide and Conquer was European. So it would be very likely that Divide and Conquer would be part of, um, would fall under European jurisdiction. But Third Age Total War may not. Um, or furthermore, it may even be that, um, I don't know why I'm lining up so far away. Oh, we have to line up so far away. We're just going to run at them. We're just going to push everyone through this gate and, and charge the buggers. It may well be um, that, in fact, it would go on wherever the game is registered, um, which would be America, I believe, because I think Creative Assembly is uh, follows American law. If I remember rightly, when I was reading the terms, the... Um, terms to you actually use the game they say which jurisdiction it covers in anyway sorry i'm getting onto a bit of a, a law um <laughs> a bit of a legal lecture there but the point is that if we just included third age total war in our own mod yes total war center might take umbrage with that and they would likely say sorry you can't be on total war center anymore but I don't think there's anything else they can really do to us. For example, Reforged is in the same position. If King Kong came back and said, hey, Reforged is using Third Age Total War without my permission. I mean, the most you could do is ModDB would probably remove Reforged. Because it is against their terms of service to use another's mod without their permission. Um, but then the next question that we came across as we were discussing this yesterday in a kind of intellectual debate. The mod team were discussing it. Um, was that Divide and Conquer is actually now so wholly unrecognisable to, to Third Age Total War that could it be true to say that including Third Age Total War in our download would be tantamount to stealing their mod? Or is Third Age Total War's original content now such a small part of Divide and Conquer that is it fair to say that instead they would merely be a sub-mod addition, like a credit note? Um, like, for example, we are using Cedric's um, UIs for the bottom, for when you're on the campaign strategy map, the, the, the image that displays at the bottom, we're going to use Cedric's submod for that. So we'd put in the credits Cedric 37's um, a UI submod, thank, like, thanking him for allowing us to use it. 
And surely now we are at a stage where that is all we would need to do for Third Age Total War as well. That was the consideration we were discussing yesterday. And I feel very strongly that Divide and Conquer is now so wholly unrecognisable to Third Age Total War. We use hardly any of their original content. Almost everything in DAC now has been created by Divide and Conquer. However, you can't necessarily take away from the fact that Third Age Total War is certainly the spiritual creator of Divide and Conquer. And that, of course, would never change. So, I'm, it's a difficult one. It's, it's all a difficult one, really. The bottom line is that you, the user, would have an awful lot easier time installing Divide and Conquer if we were allowed to include Third Age Total War in the base. And is it not? Given that none of this is paid for, we're not stealing money from Third Age Total War, we're not directly um, taking any slice of the competition, because there is no competition. In order for there to be competition in, in this kind of setting, there must be consideration, i.e. you must get something out of it. And we don't. Um, so surely, given that is true, they would want users to have the best experience they can have. That must surely be the goal. But I say they, the original creators of Third Age Total War are long gone. So it would be up to the site moderators of Third Age of Total War Center to decide whether or not they agree with our viewpoint and they think we have a point and that we should be allowed to use Third Age's content. But anyway, watch this space. If they do say yes and we are allowed to include Third Age Total War, then the download total for Divide and Conquer version 3, the Cold North, would be 1. If we are not allowed to include the Third Age Total War and you've never played DAC before, the download total would be 4. So you can see even just straight away the there's merit. Very much in our favor. Victory will be ours. Um, so do, as I say, watch this space. I don't want to crap all over Third Age Total War. We would not be here without them, which is why we didn't want to just go ahead and do it without talking to anyone. Now, to cut Reforged a little bit of slack, as I've just laid into them for this whole uh, um, video so far, um, they don't use Total War Center, so they are likely to be wholly unaware of um, King Kong's original post saying you must do this, this, and this in order to use Third Age Total War. So you've got to cut them some slack. I mean, ignorance is no defense of the law, which is a key principle in certainly in British law. Um, but that's, but we're not really talking about the law, are we? We're talking about a gentleman's agreement, and ignorance is very much a defense to a gentleman's agreement because you've got to know of it in order to be a part of it. They have lost half their men. So you can cut Reforged a little bit of slack, but then where they then fall down is that they have then been told many times that what they are doing is wrong and they didn't care, they just went with it. So we're hoping to get to include Third Age Total War, but if everything says no, we will, we won't, we won't do it, we won't include it. But, um... I mean, to give you an idea of the time kind of traffic that we bring to Total War Center, which ideally should be their main consideration, because Third Aid Total War Center is a monetary making um, entity, um, because they post advertisements on the website, of course. So, um, uh, the other day when we were discussing it, I took a quick look at the Third Age Total War section of the site, and uh, there were 74 users currently browsing Third Age Total War. 40 of the 74 were all in the Divide and Conquer thread. So at that point in time, over half of all users were in the Divide and Conquer section of the site. Over half of all users who were there for Third Age Nation War. Um, so, I mean, there's got to be an argument now to suggest that Divide and Conquer is something of a spiritual successor to Third Age Total War, given that Moss is Moss is alive and well, but has nowhere near the recognition Dak does, because Dak has been aided massively by my foray into YouTube, and it can't be understated. I'm not blowing my own horn, but I obviously I have 35 odd thousand subscribers now, and that's 35,000 more people who may well become aware of Divide and Conquer um, than Moss, because Moss doesn't have that kind of presence. Also, Moss is no longer being updated and is only being bug fixed. So, whilst when DAC, when I joined DAC, Moss was considerably bigger, um, and it was our main competitor. But now Moss is basically dead in the dirt, and it's it's and it's an it's a historical mod. Um, so it it will work, but it's not being updated. There'll be no new aspects to it, and some aspects are broken and will never be fixed. Whereas DAC obviously is continually being updated. 
but now, of course, Reforged is our biggest competitor. Without him, his troops will lose their will to fight. Um, and when Reforged releases then whichever version they plan to release that has the campaign side working, then they will be a direct competitor to us. But, <coughs> excuse me again, sorry. I've been drinking water non-stop, but every time I stop. But um, Reforged and Dak are on very amenable terms. We have a, an almost total sharing policy. They can take anything they want of Dak. We can take anything we want of Reforged. And as long as we're the both sides both credit each other and you don't use anything that isn't released yet, then we've always had an open sharing policy. So we don't feel in competition with Reforged at all. But Reforged and DAC are the two main entities I would suggest keeping Third Age alive. Third Age in of itself would stay alive, except Medieval 2 is now so old and Warhammer has become such a popular Total War um, game. I'm, I was browsing the Total War subreddit today and almost 9 out of 10 posts is about Warhammer. Um, it is phenomenally uh, um, popular. <coughs> Excuse me again. But of course, as we get further and further away from um, Medieval 2's release date... Oh, look at this guy. Do the side shuffle. He's like, please don't make me fight them. I really don't want to fight them. Oh, if, I, if I have to, I suppose I can walk there slowly. Oh, he looks like he's just dancing to his own tune, you know. Live life by your own rhythm, that's what he says. Anywho, um, Medieval 2 is, as I say, very, very old now. And as we get further and further away from its release, less and less people are going to download and play it. And therefore, less and less people are going to play Third Age, Dak, or Reforged. Um, but without Dak or Reforged, I don't think Third Age Total War would continue to grow in popularity. Precisely because not that many people would buy Medieval 2. So, I don't know. It's all a big grey area, but we hope to include Third Age Total War in the installer so that it's easier for everyone. It will mean that the inst installation file is quite large, but downloading a single large file and running a single executable is preferred to downloading four average size today. files and running four executable. So, there we are. 118 Belagar crossbows. After all of that melee fighting, and still the Belagar crossbows got more. Now the da the plus side of the method that we are using to release the mod means that space and size is less of an issue. So we may well now look into. At the minute, I've increased the loading screens up to 150, and we may use more of El Monsteros to make it about 200, just to increase variety. But also, we could, if we wanted to, add back in event videos. Personally, I don't like them, and so I would rather they stayed a sub mod, um, or or just disappear altogether entirely. But um, we shall see, I suppose. As with we all things, triumphed. time will Lord, tell. Our courage and honor have conquered. How? What is the population? Can can I find out the population before I massacre the population? Oh, I suppose that one takes you down to the minimum, which is like 250 or something, or maybe 1,000. So there's probably about 20,000 people. So if we kill 7,000, we're not going to be in trouble. No, indeed. Look, there we are. There's the Citadel upgrade. Um, which I would like. But what we also need to do now is nip up there, cross the river, and get down here to support our... Ah, no, we just need to defeat that Misty Mountains army, and then the reinforcements from this side can go across to the other side. We will leave behind them, and them, and 177 of them, see how much they dislike us. Oh, a lot. Leave behind then... Orders. Another larger well unit. By your command. What's so wrong? Why do you hate me so much? Oh, King's Men culture is so low. Middlemen is so high. And that's what it all is, cultural unrest. 50% hatred. I, mean, I could build that, but I'd rather get the Citadel up. Your order, uh, well, I'll tell you what, for now, let's not stoke their hatred of us and, and wait it out. Now, I'm sure there was another one of these, and a big important one somewhere. Ah, oh, no, we've already fought. Oh, of course, we won Bree at the end of the last one, didn't we? We won in Bree, rather. You don't need to be there anymore, okay? Oh, I can spell my, my dinner. <laughs> Sausages for dinner today, everyone. Everyone loves a sausage of the edible variety. Yes, Aha! We there we are, the last game. one, Barquetta. Perfect. Oh, and another simple victory. They have no garrisons at all. Captain Bavor. He's got dwarven catapults, so you go watch your yourselves. Courage, men. We march into battle. 
In other news, we have found someone to do our new UIs. And if you are present on Total War Center, you'll be able to see Cedric 37's icons, UI icons, that we asked um, for him to do. Of course, us and Cedric um, wanted a bit more freedom than perhaps we were hoping he would want, um, given that we wanted the iconography to match up with our existing stuff. So Cedric then has released what he created as his own submod. So if you want new icons right now for version 2.2, you can get them on Total War Center. If however, of course, um, and not if however, that, that, that didn't make sense, sorry. Um, when we release version 2.3, however, we will have new icons, courtesy of um, Mats, who is someone you may know if you've been on the Discord, as he used to be one of the Marshals, and is currently one of the Swan Knights, which is the moderating rank. He is one of the moderators of Discord. Um, and uh, a very nice guy as well, so I'm very grateful to him for the icons. I like what I've seen thus far an awful lot, and um, although as I record this, he has just sent me the um, selection, the examples of what he's done, um, and I purposefully didn't look at them just yet because I wanted to record straight away so that I could get it in before dinner. Um, but I'm very keen to, when I finish this recording, go and see what he has come up with for our new faction icons. But I, obviously he sent us an example of what he was thinking, what kind of, what, along the lines of what he thought they should be. So we already have a kind of idea of what they're going to look like. Ah, no, they're after some mortars. Where are we? Barquetta. This army does actually matter a bit more. Um, right. The gates are down. Archers, you're not really going to be used here, so run away. <clears throat> Get the generals out so that they don't die. Um, and I'd take the... No, stronger ones are going to have to go in because we do actually need to do something. Shield bearers at the door. You lot, however, come and stand near the door. Now you, can you shoot at them? Yes, you can. Give them all you have. So anyway, so we're going to have new UI icons, which is very, very good. In addition, Cedric's actual UI, the ones, that I, as I spoke about a moment ago, that fill the bottom of the screen when you're on the campaign map, we've also edited those so that certain aspects of Dax UIs have remained. Because Cedric's one was based off of Third Age Total Wars, so we lost a lot of Dax-specific UI, uh, or UI elements. So we've added those back in, or, or I have added those back in. Specifically, if you've seen Cedric's work, the, the big thing I took away was the... Um, evil men, the men of the east, their recruitment icon was a monkey god helmet slash head. Uh, and whilst it looked very cool, I didn't think it really fit Our with Middle Earth, so I cut that. Today. Reset the it to the normal. Walls belong to us now. I need to be able to flank these dwarves, that's why I've got those in over on that side. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. The shield bearers are going to hold well there. The enemy general lies dead. Ah, the enemy general is dead already. Oh yeah, look, why don't you guys go for them? Shieldbearers, Scouts and Catapult, they haven't got much, have they? I'm hoping that's a better angle. The Catapult's about to fire. Oh, there we are. No, not really, they're hitting the wall. Now, when Leo created this battle map, he made it so that the wall um, doesn't actually count as a wall. Hence why it cannot be destroyed. And it's taking zero damage despite being hit point blank frequently. Ah, yeah, we're in. Oh, come off it. Push through, push through. Why can't you go through that side? Well, we're in anyway. How are we doing? What are we up against now? Shield bearers again. I thoroughly enjoyed um, <clears throat> learning all of that, the new stuff I learned about the installer. And uh, learning how to just set various things. The oh, the other bloody. brilliant thing that I'm arguably actually most happiest about is, you know when you install Divide and Conquer, um, the, when you hit the 15 read-only files, you have to click a retry button over and over and over and over and over. Well, you'll be pleased to know that that is no longer a thing. I learned which command I needed to add to make it so that it overwrites read-only files automatically without needing user permission. 
I'm really perplexed as to why they don't go through the left hand side. I have to remember that for future versions, especially when we are attacking the AI or something. If we continue like this, they just we don't like the standing anywhere near that lower side. There we are, shut them all down. It's over. Arthur Dine will be ours. The north falls as the south rises. Torben Casper wavering. This is going to be perfect timing as well. This is going to end bang on when I need it to. Which is good. You guys come over here. You're going to flank. Take those if ones. We you. Like this, we will smash the enemy. There we are. Curl around. We Sandwich them up. The Let me watch the last few go. Oh, look. They're still shooting. The chammy buggers. Don't let them get their arrows. Oh, look at that. Lunge from afar. Oh, I sprodded him in the ribs. The ribs from behind as well. So vicious. He's still firing, though. He's taking none of it. Mmm. No, just as he was about to loose, a halberdier comes in and ends him. Did you see how he suddenly grew in size because the their dwarven animations were never edited to match dwarves? <laughs> Be awed by the victory we have won here today. Abrazanim Nadu Tarek. Took one, two, six down. Nadu Tarek. That is an image of Dale. Uh, the city of. And it's a flame. No, not Dale, sorry. Lake Town. Fires of Smaug run rampant throughout. So anyway, there we are. That's a big update on <clears throat> the future of Divide and Conquer. And uh, we... Ah! I'm not going to tell you, of course, but um, you'll be pleased to know that we've got a rough An idea of when we want to release it. Victory. So that's how it goes. Yes, it is. Conquest. Then there's only one thing for it. Wiping them all out. I'll take a Dark Sanctuary. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, we could probably get a Blacksmith here, methinks. Have they got a blacksmith tier higher than what we get? Yes, they have. <laughs> they have got a um, <laughs> the seventh tier or the sixth tier, I think. So we get mass maximum use out of it. Anyway, while we've got two generals here, your orders. I'd lord. quite like some towers. This tower will keep vigil over the. Yes, my lord. We need to see what the dwarves are going this to come up with in response to our successful Blitzkrieg. The army here is preparing and will move to Fornos, but I'm not sure we're going to kill both of those in one go. But we'll see. But with the extra push we've just given to the dwarves, I the know. Misty Mountains should be able to now come forth and show their power and their pride. Um, Oh, and next episode we're going to have to fight in Baradim Resort because I haven't even ended the turn this yes. time. As you command. Why am I moving I'm over there when he's right there? You. Oh, because isn't there a big army here? Or what, what am I doing? I don't really know. Your will. Oh, yes, we are moving to As suppress a large army that must be coming. Or oh, we're merging together and then moving off to Baradim Resort. I think that's what's happening. Anyway, I am going to end the episode there, so apologies that no end turn has passed. But I imagine we're going to be attacked in quite a few places. Uh, but the next episode will also be us attacking the dwarves uh, because everywhere will now have its siege equipment up and we can fight in all of those extra locations. But for now, that is all. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navarna den Perimad Melonin, and farewell.